Hello, and thank you for electing to watch our presentation. I'm Megan Grady here with Gabriela Munez to talk about student-created documentaries in foreign language classes. Yeah, uh, thank you, Megan. Uh, the first thing to create this class was the idea of uh, bring reality and stimulate students to make a difference with documentaries. Uh, for language classes, we need uh, access to the culture of the language. Uh, culture and languages go together. So this was a, a, a great idea to have documentaries that show the, the Hispanic world to the students. Also, we are, we are in a difficult moment of disinformation in media. So this was a, a way to fight, give the students some tool to fight uh, disinformation. And also the good thing about documentaries is that is an artifact that is interdisciplinary. We use different languages, as you will see, also, um, Spanish, besides Spanish, you, we use audiovisuals, uh, we address social issues and different uh, disciplines in, in that way. Um, also, it's a relational world, a communicative way, because we work in teams, uh, and this was very important in a, in a communication class. And um, teaching the audiovisual language aspect is really where I come in and a little background on how I came to partner with Gabrielle on this. Uh, she applied for an academic technology and innovation mini grant uh, from the Center for Academic Technology, which provides a small uh, financial stipend as well as technical support to faculty. And my boss mentioned to me, you know, this is what she wants to do. And knowing that in addition to my more traditional bachelor's and master of arts degrees, I also have a technical degree, an associate of science in uh, broadcast production with emphases in electronic news gathering and video editing and post-production. So this was a wonderful opportunity for me to get to explore that side of my expertise that I don't get to explore all the time and to partner with a really great, uh, passionate faculty member who I always enjoy working with. Uh, the class have two modes. The first is the traditional mode, like uh, uh, discussion things, and we address uh, uh, social issues like uh, women rights, that globalization, uh, uh, environmental issues. Um, in the class, we, do, we focus in the language, in the Spanish language, the different registers, the way that the people, uh, the dialogues, the way the people communicate, but also we focus on how the, the, the documentary is done, how the, the director managed that. And Mega will talk to the other part, that is the technological aspect of the class. Yes, yeah, so Gabriella and I started planning way before the class started. I think we started planning uh, late spring, early summer yeah. uh, before that semester. And uh, we sat down and really decided that we wanted to have four workshops for the students. And these were the tech workshops that I would come in and facilitate in collaboration with her. We really partnered to make these um, really engaging workshops. So we started with a workshop on getting students to think about and understand how photographs and videography uh, communicates beyond what's in the actual frame, how the frame itself and the different angles uh, we choose when we're taking photographs or taking video really convey meaning um, and in some ways can reflect our own biases uh, depending on what the topic is. So we wanted students to be aware of those things, have awareness around that. So when they would go out and take video, they would know um, to think about these things. Different elements that convey meaning can be angles, framing, light, focus, composition. This is an infographic that I created to accompany that particular lesson um, where I just explained different vantage points. So get students to think about the angles they're using and what kinds of meaning angle in itself conveys. Also framing um, and how that can be used to skew um, a situation. For instance, if you don't have a very big crowd, but you zoom in on a small part of the crowd, uh, you can make it look like a big crowd versus if you have a wider uh, frame, it can really show that maybe the crowd is not as big as you thought it was. So just kind of showing uh, what is beyond the frame so that students, especially with documentary, can think about if they're capturing the reality of a situation. Lighting, uh, we talked about, um, you know, darkening images, um, lightening images, 
creating hyper reality and whether that would make sense in a documentary setting. And then also composition. One thing I notice with students who don't have a lot of video experience often uh, center everything, which is kind of runs contrary to uh, different rules that we have for image composition in both photography and videography. Uh, one of them would be the rule of thirds, uh, where you place images along the frame and how you weigh them across the frame really makes a difference from a visual interest standpoint. And then lastly, we talked about focus. And then after I did this part, Gabriella had pictures uh, from the documentaries the students were watching and asked them to analyze the angles and the composition and the framing and so on. So we were really working in tandem um, to make that particular lesson work as we were with the interviewing techniques one, which was the second workshop for this class. So the interviewing techniques, we really wanted students to think about how to ask questions in ways that weren't closed ended and didn't elicit like yes or no answers. We wanted students to ask questions that got interviewees, interviewees talking. We wanted them to ask questions in a way that would get interviewees to give detail and broadcasting what we call hanging a picture in front of the mic, whereas you use descriptive language to make people feel like they're part of the scene. Um, we also went over some really basic interviewing techniques. One, um, Vox Populi, which is voice of the people, or what we commonly refer to as person on the street interviews, where you approach people at random and either ask them a question about how they feel about something, or maybe ask them to define a particular concept. And then um, if you ask enough people, particularly when you're defining a concept, you'll, you'll hear a lot of uh, counter counter information that then provides an entry point into, you know, if you want to clench around that, that particular concept and explore what it really means in the context of a documentary or something, uh, it provides a good entry point to that. Uh, third workshop we did on narrative and sound. So we talked about documentary structure. So everything from the three part structure where we have the setup and the conflict or obstacle and then the resolution. Um, and then we also did some other different uh, storytelling strategies we didn't do that because we wanted students to shoehorn those ideas into those narrative structures. More so our goal was give students the tools to think about story and some time-tested strategies for telling stories. We also taught them where to find uh, appropriate licensed sound effects and music to accompany their documentaries. And then finally, with editing, we went in a really simple direction because we were forced to. Initially, this was a group project with students and we planned to do kind of a more robust session on editing. However, uh, due to the pandemic in March, the class transitioned to a fully remote class and Gabriella had made the decision to go ahead and make this an individual project instead of a group um, due to that reason. So we wanted to give the students, because they had that extra weight of doing it all on their own, something that was easy to edit with. So that's where I just did Adobe Spark. We have some uh, examples here. Uh, we can see how the student took what they learned during the workshop in these examples. Uh, Katie Bo short film that is Trabajadores Esenciales. She used a kind of performative mode. She is the protagonist and she will tell her experience as an essential worker. Here is Katie. Me llamo Katie and soy interna de farmacia en CBS. En ese momento actual se considera mi trabajo esencial. Antes del empiezo de la pandemia, iba a mi farmacia algunos días por la semana después de mis clases y trabajaba tonos lentos. Me encanta mi trabajo en mi equipo en CBS. If you can see the, her example, the tone is emotional and intimate. She showed in this documentary the, the heavy weight put in the essential worker. Also, she mentioned the, the disparity that the, pandem the pandemic event showed us that uh, different groups are treated different. And even she mentioned the rejection, for example, to the Asian people. So it's uh, in, a, in four minutes, she, she captured you know, what happened uh, when the pandemic uh, arrived. So our second example comes from Mitchell Bennett um, in his documentary, Los Voluntarios de la Pandemia. Um, Mitchell takes a different approach and really tries to use a chorus of voices to convey a point. So in this case, um, in combination with interviews, voiceovers, and pictures, so that audiovisual language that show different changes the pandemic provoked um, in the uh, Church Harvest Bible Chapel Food Pantry in Chicago, where he's from. Um, so he has different volunteers explain different jobs, particularly the director. And the clip we have is going to show the director explaining a little bit about uh, what happens at the food pantry. Classes de trabajo que 
los voluntarios hacen en la despensa. Uh, el primero clase es uh, de, la, la, los voluntarios que trabajan con la comida y ellos orden y um, uh, llevan el, uh, la comida a los estantes y um, organi or organizan um, las cosas, uh, los estantes para que están listo para la gente. Um, All right, and so he goes on throughout the documentary to really show how the food pantry was impacted by the pandemic and how um, the service expectations, as far as the community were concerned, um, rose rapidly. Um, they had to respond really quickly to a lot of need. Um, and one thing I really liked about Mitchell's approach is I find a lot of times when people do interviews, sometimes they use like a blank wall as a backdrop or not. I, he, he made a really good use of space and that his backdrops were different parts of the food pantry. So it really kind of invited the viewer into that space to get a sense of, of different aspects of it. So, so really well done um, from that standpoint. Okay, so um, the first thing is that I love to work with Megan in this project. As you can see in the examples, she informed us about many possibilities to use the audiovisual language. Um, the student helped that to convey the their student idea. Also, the class was a, a really a good opportunity to learn about the culture and practice the language. I um, also really loved working with Gabriella. Uh, as always, um, she's great to work with. And I loved how this class and kind of the different affordances of di digital media allowed me to connect with students um, and with Gabriella's subject matter to get students to reflect on how we explore the possibility of digital tools thoughtfully, technically, as well as creatively. So it really was a pleasure. Yeah, um, well, and what the, we will plan to teach the class again in 2022. Um, what is the future of the documentary films? And I think that the student will have the word about that. You know, they will know what happened with that, but have a lot of opportunities to, to grow with uh, this uh, genre in teaching. So okay, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for listening to us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.